put out there, what was your takeaway? And you can even take a picture of yourself in front of your laptop, take a screenshot, take a picture of the presenter, and then post that on social media, either on Twitter or on Instagram. Don't forget to tag us as well as using that hashtag ready, set, Mimeo STEM. All right, our next two sessions, we got Christian and Haley. Hi, everybody. So I was asked to present, and I am no expert at all, but I have some fun ideas that I would like to share with you all. Um, the printers that we have are Robo E3 printers. Um, they have Wi-Fi and Ethernet capabilities. They use filament, um, PLA, and beyond. Um, the different vocabulary that I wanted to share with you all are extruder, which is where the filament comes out. And then the stepper motor is what pulls the filament up into the printer. And then the build plate is where the filament lands. It's, I like to call it a platform. And then whenever you do print, you just have to make sure it's a, an OBJ or an STL. Let's see if I can, no, there we go. Okay, so the program that I really like to use with my students is Tinkercad, which is the other presentation going on right now. My students love using it because it's super simple. It's really easy and they can make anything that they're imagining in their brain come to life. Oh, and there are several other uh, programs too. There's Thinger. Thingiverse, there's My Mini Factory, Pin Shape. I'm sure there's many more, but I those are the only ones that I've heard of. But of those, Tinkercad, I can verify is easy to use and it's fun. Um, so my first big project that I did with my students was during Christmas or the holiday season. We traveled to several different countries. Um, and in those countries, we, we learned about their customs, their traditions, things that they did that we don't do in America. And they chose their country that was their favorite. And they designed a 3D ornament based on that country. So in the picture down below, you can see some of their ornaments that they made. The first one is a pickle because in Germany, you know, they hang a pickle on the tree. Um, the second one was meant to be Santa Claus. <laughs> and then there's a Christmas tree. There's Santa coming down the chimney and then hot cocoa. Um, I can't see that last one. But they had so much fun with those. That, that was really what sparked their curiosity about 3D printing was making those ornaments. Um, I also had somebody on um, Facebook mentioned that they made Christmas ornaments and sold them as a fundraiser for their school. So if you need a, a quick way to make money for your school, that would be an awesome fundraiser. Um, the next one, the next idea that I had is um, usually around Halloween time, <laughs> we start getting into like the Halloween season. We read Bonaparte Falls Apart. Um, so you could read that book with your students. You could talk about bones. If you have upper grade levels, you could just uh, discuss like your skeleton and different bones that are found in the body. And you could actually have students create those different pieces. You could even have them lay it out and make one big skeleton together as a class, um, which is something that I want to try next year. I think that sounds really fun. So there's that. Um, types of bridges. So I did this last year with my kids and um, we did it around St. Patrick's Day. We were studying about different types of bridges and the architecture architecture of them. And the Chicago River is actually dyed green. So we watched the live stream of the river and we got to see the bridges and the boats in real life. And then um, we created bridges. We didn't make 3D ones, but this year that's my goal is to make 3D bridges. So I think that would be such a really neat extension. Um, the ocean zones. One of my favorite lessons has always been the ocean. I'm obsessed with the ocean and, you know, all the things that we don't know about it. So whenever I teach the zones, I like for them to explore the different animals that live or the different fish that live within the different zones. So I thought, how neat would it be if they got to actually design on Tinkercad a different animal or fish that lives in that zone of the ocean 
And then they got to print it. And then you could even lay it out um, like how is shown in this picture right here to where they could see the differences in the zones and the animals that live there. Um, this one has been on my mind since I heard about it. I really, really want to try this. Um, so you can actually let your students design a coral reef and place it into the ocean. Um, there's people who can probably do that for you. Um, if you're up north, closer to oceans, I'm sure there's people all around there in Texas. I'm still trying to find somebody that I could partner with to do that. But since coral is dying out, um, it's bleaching and it's dying from the hot, the water's uh, rising temperature. So whenever that is uh, gone from the ocean, it would disrupt the ecosystem. So that's a lesson that would be great to teach the kids and a great way to give back to... Sorry, <laughs> but that would be a great way to help out your community or even help out the world because you're giving back to something so much larger than what's just, you know, in your classroom. So that's something I want to try with my kiddos. And I wanted to share that with you all. Um, animal shelters. One of my kids had this idea last year and I thought it was such a sweet idea um, you could help a local animal shelter by having your students create a name tag for the animals that are there. And I'm sure they would have so much fun with that. All teachers, please report. Okay. And then this one, board games, I think, are really interesting. And the, the history of them is super interesting to me. Um, but that would be a really neat lesson if you were to, to teach the kids about the history of different board games like Monopoly or, um, you know, Scrabble, different things like that. And then they could design their own board game or they could come up with a design similar to Scrabble or, or whatnot. Um, so you could also teach physics through 3D printing. Um, you could have your kids design marble runs, or you could even have them create catapults. So we've done catapults before, and it was a blast. They absolutely loved it. Um, we actually did it around fall, and we took little pumpkins to put at the end of their catapult and pull, catapulted them. Um, school board teacher gifts. This is an awesome way to thank your school board for supporting your STEAM program. Uh, you can have your kids design a gift on Tinkercad. Um, gifts that we have done have been keychains, and most recently we made a pen holder. And some of the ideas that they came up with were awesome. <laughs> Uh, whenever they printed, we let them use paint pens to color them, to decorate them, and that worked out really well. Um, it would also be great for teacher gifts, um, for teacher appreciation week. Um, I've seen where people have made little vases for, with flowers, something just simple like that, but the kids would have so much fun. Okay, does anybody have any questions or anything they want to add to what I said? Any better ideas? <laughs> if you've got the chat open, Haley, we've got a few of us commenting over there. Um, Thank you, I'm so sorry. Let me see. So, animal tag idea is a fun one folks are chatting about. Yes. Yeah, because my, I don't know about y'all students, but my students love animals. Anytime we have a lesson that has anything to do about animals, they do, they love it. Hey, Haley, I have a question for you. Uh -huh. um, just a suggestion, maybe if, if a teacher hasn't been using a 3D printer, if maybe they just got a 3D printer in their classroom or access to one, um, which of the ideas that you presented today might be um, an easier one to maybe to dip your toes in with? Um, versus another one? And what might be a more complicated one that a teacher might look at doing um, further down the road or with more knowledge? 
Um, so the the ornament is a really easy one. Um, they, you know, they can make them flat, like just a flat shape, or they can make them more three D. Um, they had a lot of fun with that. It's super simple. The more difficult ones would probably be like a catapult or, you know, something that's a little more intricate where they would have to focus on their shape and make sure that it would print right. I see a chat question about, do you have a problem with your printer jamming? I have had mine jam before, but it's super simple to take the piece apart and clean it out. Usually when it jams, well, in my experience, it was because a piece of my filament was broken in there. And Haley, have you used um, other printers? Uh, which which 3D printers have you worked with? I've only worked with the, the Robo E3. Okay. And Catherine, who a asked the question, is Catherine, are you using the Robo as well, or are you using a, a different 3D printer? Or were you just curious? Um, I, am, I am a STEAM teacher in uh, New Jersey, and I have two... Walls got Taz printers. They're what the high school uses. So I, I purchased two for my classroom, um, middle school. And I, it gems like all the time. So I'm just wondering if, you know, other people are finding this problem with other types of printers as well. It's, it's a problem. Well, it sounds like you and your high school might want to talk to our friends here at, uh, at box light. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> um, one thing I will say, Catherine, is the Lulzbot is one of the only 3D printer companies I know that uses that thicker filament. So their entire extruder system is a little different than uh, the standard because they have the 2.35 instead of the 1.75 millimeters. So while 3D printing printers do jam, it's part of the technology. Uh, Certainly, we try to do everything on our printers to make it not happen as often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'd certainly be interested in information about it. Maybe um, if I have extra funds to purchase another of a different brand so that they have experience with both. You know, we, we purchased the Long Talk Taz simply to keep them... Uh, yeah, kind of in sync with what they're going to be doing in the high school. But even the high school teacher tells me that most often they're working on Tinkercad and on other and not actually printing out the items, which as a middle school teacher and lower, I, it annoys me. I need those physical, <laughs> I need those physical, tangible results for our students. Well, remember, Catherine, as part of this social media challenge, you can actually win one of the Robo 3Ds, and then you'd have a free opportunity to be the guinea pig for your whole team, and you might change the entire trajectory of that program. I'm just saying. Yeah, I understand. The problem is I'm not on Instagram. I'm kind of a dinosaur, so I refuse to go on all those social medias. My husband gets stuck on it, and I'm like, you just tell me what's important when you find it. Well, so, there's sorry, also Twitter, sorry. and uh, Twitter is also part of it if you're on that, but if you're not, you can do the Neo STEM challenge um, okay. and highlight how you're using, like, uh, my STEM kits activities or anything like that, and that's another chance to win. All right, uh, okay. we can talk to you more about 3D printers. I see Lisa's got her hand up, so okay. uh, Thank Lisa, you. let me uh, switch over to your comment or question. Hi, um, I just had a question. What grade level was this? these lessons used, especially the ornaments? Sorry, I had to unmute. I've used them in grades first through fifth. But you could certainly use them in any grade level, I think. If you're doing it with younger students, things like the animal tags and the ornaments, you can do using things like the scribble tool where students can simply draw and create a 3D object. So it's a really good way to use it with younger students and also adults and older students have a blast with the scribble tool. So that's like my go-to for getting started 
with great a lot for, of it, that's a great tool for accessibility too so if you're looking at ways to make it more accessible for a broader audience in your classroom that's a really wonderful way to do that so i'm really glad that you suggested that tool awesome all right, well, Haley, I had another question for you. Um, from I've, I've heard a little bit about your ornaments activity, and I believe it, I remember you were saying you did some research about like different parts of the world. How much do you focus on doing those interdisciplinary activities where maybe there's a little social studies or a little language arts with the design? Um, so I probably do that every single time because whenever I teach a lesson, since it is uh, gifted and talented, we're more project based. So everything is kind of incorporated in one. Um, we're kind of lucky that way because we have more time to dive deeper into things like that. I think it's really important, too. It also activates students who, you know, learn different ways or have different interests and things like that. It does for sure. We actually went on a field trip today to our, the state park, the Atlanta State Park in Texas. And I thought of a million other things that I could use a 3D printer for on that field trip. What's one thing that you would definitely like next year you're going to want to do? Of those ideas, what was the one that you're like, that's the one? The coral reef. <laughs> I'm so intrigued by that. I want to know more. And I just, I wish if y'all know anything, please tell me because that interests me so much. So that I know Hannah told me about it the, the first time, I think it was a couple years ago that you mentioned it to me that uh, a teacher that had a 3D printer from Boxlight, she had done the same thing. So that kind of sparked my interest in it. Yeah, actually, so that's Shelly Emsley, and she's going to be giving a talk later today. She's one of our sessions right near the end, right before the keynote. Okay. Uh, so if you stick around, talk to her, connect with her, because she can tell you how she found the coral reef scientists or how she got connected. I'm not sure if it was like through discovery education or a friend of a friend or something, but I do know she will be on this same uh, event later today doing a session on... Uh, print and paint of using like tying in art and, and doing texture with your 3D prints. So. Okay. I also see Catherine wanting to or using the coral reef idea as well. I love that one too. Totally, totally a big fan. One of the other activities you highlighted uh, that caught my interest was the building bridges. I think that one is really scalable um, in terms of, you mentioned, you know, or Nick was asking about like beginner versus more advanced mm -hmm. ideas. We do like an intermediate version of that where they're just building a flat truss bridge. It's one of the design challenges in my STEM kits called building bridges, I think. Um, but you can go like, that's just a simple flat object that then gets 3D printed and stress tested until it breaks, which is a lot of fun having done that uh, stress testing myself here um, for our pre-designed ones. But then I think like there's so many ways you can get into actual like suspension bridges and all sorts of like more 3D things. So thinking about how to scale that. Do you ever have your students like revisit an old project and see if they can improve on their designs or anything like that as they get more familiar with the technology? They will sometimes, they'll go back and they'll look and they'll think, I made that? Let me fix that. So they do. Um, it is a buildable skill. You kind of learn more as you go. It's actually a really cool suggestion, too, that idea of being able to revisit something once you've built a little bit more technical capacity with the tool that you're working in. Um, sometimes we do have a great understanding of, of the 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 component that, you know, the educational and academic component that we, you know, the skill we were supposed to learn, right? Um, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's the tool that we have to deliver it through that gets kind of in the way. So that idea of being able to come back to something that you've done previously um, and, and readdress that is, is really quite effective. We know that that's really beneficial just in learning anyway to be able to do, um, but to do so really intentionally with something like this, really it kind of honors the purpose, right? And it really shows the value that 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 you set forth on, on that learning. 
I love that. Mm-hmm. So for people who've never used 3D printers or are just getting started, what are some just general tips or learning experiences you went through that you wish you'd known uh, getting started? Do you just want us to tell you or chat it? I was answering that either option works, but I'm on mute, so no one can hear me. <laughs> I wish I had known how long it takes to print something, even something small, because it takes a long time and then the kids can't really see it being printed. Yeah, I agree. Starting. With anytime I do student designs, I try and pick something small to start with. Things like the dog tags that would print so quickly. Or, I mean, even if you're doing the animals or bridges, like, I all, every time in a My Stem Kids Design Challenge, and I don't know if you do the same in yours, Haley, um, we have design constraints. Um, so, like, telling people, okay, this is your maximum build volume. That way I can make sure that every student's thing prints in 20 minutes or less. Maybe the animals are tiny, but they printed in 20 minutes or less. At least for the first few projects, to get that excitement and enthusiasm up. You know, I don't want any design challenge that's going to take more than an hour for the first one, because you have a whole class of student projects. Well, Hannah, you asked a great question because the chat popped off. Everybody really had something to contribute. So, excellent. You want to read some of those out for us? For anyone watching the recording, they don't often see Yeah, it. absolutely. So, um, the first thing was looking at, at the time that it took to print. Um, troubleshooting, awareness of, of the most effective ways to troubleshoot is really important. So, having a good understanding of the tools so that you kind of know how to work around when those troubles arise. Um, uh, do 3D classes before the end of the year, um, <laughs> not end up printing all summer. So definitely avoid that. We definitely don't want you to have to work all summer printing. Uh, someone has to stay with the printer the entire time it's printing. So um, being aware of, of uh, the parameters of your printer so that you're making sure that, that you're following the safety and, and, and the protocols for that. Um, and then uh, Amber shared as well, I was super scared of what might come and so started with so many rules. I learned to let go a little and let the kids lead a little more. I also learned to group the projects. Um, and I used to work at a paper printing site and learned to group all the light colors. Therefore, before I print, that's smart. See, it's like that intentional thing that really is going to save you that time later. Um, during my 3D printer, it's running 24-7. And see, and that's what you want to hear. Because, I mean, if it's running 24-7, it means that that people are engaged and that there's learning happening and that you're making use of that awesome tool. So I love that. And I love the idea of, of letting go a little bit because, you, you know, it's hard to make, you can't manage all of the, the pieces all of the time. And part of the great thing is the kids learning those same things along with you. I love that. Oh, see, haha. See, Catherine, I love that. So Hannah sharing about um, that. That's great feedback about um, whether or not you need to be with your um, certain parameters. And that's why I kind of phrased it that way. Um, was that idea of, you know, certain printers are going to work a little bit differently. Um, the amount of your attention that they require <laughs> is going to vary. So, yeah, the comment that you have to leave them, watch them constantly. I check in on mine every couple hours. I check it at the beginning of a print and then an hour in or a couple hours in. This print I'm holding took 55 hours. So I slept a few different nights in the middle of this printing. I went out hiking. I visited another town. And with our printers, we can remote monitor them with a camera. So I just kept an eye on it. But this is obviously a very large, very detailed uh, print. It's from one of our artifacts kits. So yeah, getting to know like what your printer is capable of and what you can do uh, is, is definitely worth noting as well. But I love running it overnight. I, Ran, I run things overnight all the time to get things to print sooner and faster. Oh, resin printers. That I have not played with. I see someone's talking about uh, resin printers in the chat. I understand those are faster, but more complicated. I might be wrong on that one. <laughs> 
a little messy. There we go. <laughs> so you mean, so you mean it's fun and it's fun. Okay, good. Well, Haley, do you have any final notes you want to leave with the group or anything like that? I see we've got our breakout room closing in about a minute and a half. And uh, thank you so much for sharing all those ideas. I think you've really kickstarted a lot of conversation here about 3D printing. Well, you're so welcome. Um, I just wanted to say you do not have to be a pro to use the robo printer because I'm definitely not a pro. You just have to have a little patience. And um, like you said, just let your kids have a little more rain and have fun creating. Yeah, you were a true pro, and this is exactly why teachers are rock stars and the superheroes of the universe. You had things going on. You led an engaging presentation <laughs> on your topic. You were a content expert and a wizard today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us back in our main room. Uh, if you'd like to let us know in the chat uh, what is what was something that stood out? What got you excited? What was something that uh, just just that takeaway that that aha moment? Let us know. Continue to share, and um, we are getting the social media challenge is on its way. We have uh, some uh, folks here that are um, have already shared on Instagram. Got a great snapshot of me right there, mid sentence. So <laughs> love that post, and uh, also. Uh, we got Catherine loving the idea of designing coral reefs. Uh, Amanda loving simple but awesome 3D projects. Um, Mindy coming up with some ideas with uh, using printers uh, for core classes. Love it, love it, love it. Keep these ideas going in the chat. And um, also as a, a piece of information, if you didn't know, we are sort of having a relaunch of po uh, podcast by Box Life. And those are going to be released on Wednesday, November 8th, Unbox Innovation. <laughs>